Temptations, America's number one cat treats brand, has expanded into mealtime with their all-new Temptations dry cat food. And one cunning cat has turned to crime just to get a taste. Listen to Catch a Cat Burglar, a limited podcast series unraveling the heist of a truckload of Temptations dry cat food. Help solve this perfect crime for a chance to win a kitten caboodle of Temptations products and a cat-inspired getaway. Now until August 30th, submit who you think the perpetrator is at temptationstreats.com slash cat dash burglar. No purchase necessary. Have you cut the cord and are feeling bored with your streaming services? Curiosity Stream can help. With thousands of documentary films and TV shows, let Curiosity Stream put the science back in your screen time, astound you with history come to life, and wildlife that will reach out and grab you. We've got the fix for your nonfiction fascination. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find one for you at curiositystream.com. Welcome to Mile 12,002. Your dog just locked you out on a cross-country road trip. Fortunately, your Tucson comes with available Hyundai digital key, so your compatible smartphone is all you need to get back on the road. When it comes to smooth sailing, we're thinking of every mile. The new Hyundai Tucson. It's your journey. Test drive the new Tucson at your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Fuck him. That's what Flavio says as he hangs up the phone with Massimo Romagnoli. Fuck him. After DEA agents arrest Flavio, he agrees to help them lure Massimo to Montenegro. He told me that the client had brought the money to Montenegro. Here's Massimo, or rather, the voice actor who's been reading Massimo's court testimony. And so we found an agreement so that I would also go to Montenegro to collect the money. I informed him that I found a ticket for Podgorica, Montenegro, and we would meet there. The next morning, Massimo flies into Montenegro. Right after passport control, I was arrested by the police. U.S. authorities announced the arrests of Flavio Georgescu, Christian Vintilla, and Massimo Romagnoli on charges of conspiring to provide material support to terrorists. The terrorists, in this case, were Juan and the other FARC guys, who were, of course, not really terrorists, but DEA informants. Under federal conspiracy law, a defendant doesn't have to help actual terrorists. The defendant just needs to think he's helping terrorists. While the arrests don't get much attention in the U.S., they're big news in Romania. Bună ziua, Virgil Flaviu Georgescu a vândut arme către, grupa, către gruparea FARC. S-a întâmplat în urma acum doi... And... In Italy. Flavio, Christian, and Massimo are all about to be extradited to America to face federal criminal charges. If convicted, all three men could spend the rest of their lives in prison. I'm Trevor Aronson from Western Sound and iHeart Podcasts. This is Alphabet Boys. Episode 9. Tomorrow, I'm going to rob the bank. Flavio, Christian, and Massimo are thrown into holding cells in Montenegro until American officials can sort out their extradition to New York. At first, Flavio isn't too concerned about any of this. He couldn't persuade the DEA guys who arrested him that he's working with the CIA. But he helped them lure Massimo to Montenegro anyway. And besides, Flavio figures, the DEA and the Justice Department will talk to their counterparts at the CIA and everything will be sorted out soon enough. They'll all realize that Flavio's on their team. How else could they explain the call to the CIA 
in 2012. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Hi. Uh, my name is Flavio. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born in Romania, but right now I'm, uh, I'm a U.S. citizen. And, uh, right now I'm in... Flavio, as you know now, tells the CIA agents everything about Andy, about Juan, about the arms deal, about the whole crime before he actually commits it. It's like you call right now 911. You let them know tomorrow I'm going to rob the bank in Fifth Avenue, Citibank in the corner. This is my social security, my name, my plates on the car, my VIN number, and I have this shotgun and I have this one. It will be 9 o'clock. You going to go tomorrow to rob the bank? You have to be nuts, totally nuts. Flavio's analogy works. It's hard to argue that it doesn't, honestly. Who would be crazy enough to call the police, tell them the entire plan to rob a bank, and then go rob that bank? That's essentially what Flavio did, but with a much more serious crime. His was an international arms deal worth millions of dollars and involving the FARC, at the time, a U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organization. To Flavio, in the immediate days after his arrest, this all just seems like a temporary misunderstanding. The CIA didn't know what the DEA was doing. And neither the CIA nor the DEA knows about Flavio's previous work for the FBI. So he stuck temporarily in the muck of bureaucracy. But eventually, he thinks, the feds will figure it out. We're talking about Americans here. While locked up in Montenegro, Flavio says he receives several visits from U.S. officials. They're with the State Department. Or, so they say. They was keep coming from Washington to interview me, and the warden from that prison, he was asking me who you are. And I said, I'm nobody, I'm just a consulting businessman and uh, he said no you are not a consulting businessman because these people they come with a private jet and it's the state department private jet and sometimes they come escorted by u.s military jets i said i don't know who they are and they came over there for four or five times i give them all the information about arms laundry and everything and they let me burn over there like an animal by left him over there like an animal, Flavio is referring to the conditions of his cell in Montenegro, where he stayed for a little more than two months during the winter of 2015. I was physically and psychically tortured over there. Like, they opened the window from the cell and they keep it open day and night. There was so much snow outside and I couldn't close it because it was so high and... Uh, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything, and uh, uh, they keep the lights on all the time. There was so much noise over there, I couldn't sleep. And when I was trying to use the bathroom one time, when I got there, uh, I was sitting on the toilet, and a rat jumped from the toilet on my butt. I started to scream so bad, and they came inside with a broomstick, and they killed the rat over there in the toilet. They break the toilet to the, the ceramic toilet, and uh, they left. To this day, Flavio tells me he can't sit on a toilet. He has to put his feet on a seat and squat so he can always keep an eye on the water below him. Another rat's never going to surprise him. Flavio says he couldn't understand why all this was happening to him. A good man thrown into a cold, dark cell in Eastern Europe. I've mentioned already that I struggle to determine what's true in Flavio's story. I really do. I find myself wanting to believe his claim that he called the CIA because he felt a duty to help. See something, say something, Flavio believed. And certainly there's evidence that appears to support this. Why else... As just one example, would Flavio have agreed to lure Massimo to Montenegro? No strings attached. The most reasonable explanation, to me, is that Flavio believed he was on the same team 
as the DEA. But then, there's something else that throws me to the other side, questioning Flavio's story. And that is Christian Ventilla's account of what happens next. In late February 2015, following their detention in Montenegro, Flavio, Christian, and Massimo are flown to New York on a private jet. Flavio is seated next to Christian for the eight-hour trip. He told me that previously, during the activity in this deal, he called the CIA and informed them about this activity. This is Christian from his court testimony. He told me that the CIA's answer was not to get implicated and mind his own business. And he also told me that when he, we got arrested, he told the agent who arrested us the same thing. So during the eight hours, he told me that based on this, we should build a story. That we weren't trying to do a deal with them. We were just trying to collect information to give it to the government so we can use it as a defense. Christian claims that Flavio, on the plane, tells him that he knew the CIA didn't want him to get involved. Christian suggests that Flavio's intent was to use the CIA call as a cover story in case he ever got caught. But Christian's story is suspicious too, because apparently he doesn't know that the CIA call is ambiguous. There are no clear-cut, don't-do-anything-on-this instructions from the CIA on the recordings. The call didn't happen the way Christian claims Flavio described it. So, if what Christian is saying is true, why would Flavio say this? It doesn't really make sense. So Christian's claim just raises more questions. Questions I can't ask Christian because he won't talk to me. I don't want to do this thing, and I only want to tell the truth. And actually, that's what I told the agents in the plane. In any case, Christian refuses to go along with Flavio's plan to sync their stories as part of a joint defense. He told me if I don't agree to work with him in this way, he should, I should help him too, because he worked previously with higher agency than DEA, and his wife is running around trying to get in touch with those agencies. That, that agency he worked for is going to save him. Christian is referring to the FBI. Flavio tells Christian that not only had he called the CIA, but that he had previously worked for the FBI, an agency with a much bigger stick than the DEA has, and that the FBI would help him out of this jam. Flavio tells Christian, as they're on the flight, that his wife Andra is burning up the phones as they speak, trying to enlist the FBI's help. And that last part? I can say with certainty, that part's true. I was working for the Attorney General's office in New Mexico, and I get a phone call from Flavio's wife. This is Mark Pinto the FBI agent who was Flavio's handler in Las Vegas. By this time, Mark's left the bureau. He hasn't seen or talked to Flavio in a decade. And he doesn't even know that Flavio is now married. I have a different telephone number. And Flavio didn't have a wife. So I'm institutionally paranoid. I'm like, I can't talk to you. And she goes on and she's pleading. And I said, I, I'll have to think about this. Right after that call, Mark gets another from the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York. They want to talk to him about Flavio. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about Flavio. I don't want to talk about the old days. I don't want to talk about anything. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I don't want my house burned down for whatever reasons. Or I don't want the ire of the U.S. government. And they go, well, the U.S. considers him a terrorist. And I'm like, all the more reason. I don't want to be the, you know, former FBI agent that's taking the stand in defense of a terrorist in some DEA case, because I don't have any of the details, and I haven't seen Flavio in forever in a day. 
And they asked my opinion. I'm like, well, my opinion is if it's the same Flavio and nothing's drastically changed in his life, he got railroaded. But that's my opinion, my, my uninformed opinion. But as any good investigator would be, Mark's intrigued. He wants to know more. So he flies to New York to meet with the prosecutors. More after the break. Get thoughtful for back to school and share some good. Made Good, an organic, allergy-friendly, better-for-you snack brand, launched the Share Some Good Fund, gifting $200,000 across 1,000 teachers in the U.S. I remember my favorite teacher, Miss Johnson. She taught middle school art, and it was my favorite class because of her. She took the time and encouraged me to experiment with different materials, colors, and techniques. Our class became a place where I could express myself in a creative way and just be me. Miss Johnson unlocked the artistic talent I never even knew I had. And all these years later, when I talk about her, I can't help but smile. Teachers like Miss Johnson are always being thoughtful. So this back to school, let's be thoughtful towards our teachers with the help of Made Good. Surprise your favorite teacher and nominate them for their chance to receive $200 in school supplies. Just go to madegoodfoods.com slash share some good. That's madegoodfoods.com slash share some good to nominate a teacher now. Like many of us, you might think identity theft will never happen to you. But consider this. There's a new identity theft victim every three seconds in the U.S. That's over 15 million people by the end of this year, equal to the populations of New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago combined. Even worse, identity theft victims often don't even know they're victims. That's why LifeLock Identity Theft Protection helps you identify threats, even the ones that don't show up on a credit report, like data breaches, fraudulent bank transactions, loan and credit card applications, and crimes committed in your name. If your identity is stolen, your own dedicated LifeLock U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft. But LifeLock protects you in ways that you simply can't on your own. Save up to 25% your first year at LifeLock.com slash iHeart. That's LifeLock.com slash iHeart to save up to 25%. Identity theft protection starts here. What's up, everybody? Okay, do you guys know that even if we all ate the same and exercised the same, that we would all still look completely different? I'm Lacey Green. I'm a super trainer with body. That's B-O-D-I dot com. I'm telling you, this is something that you need in your life. The app isn't just about having a perfect body, because what is that anyway? It's about what we call health esteem. Feeling good about yourself right now, just as you are, as you work on the person you are becoming. Using Body's tools to find your version of happy and healthy. Body isn't just some software. It's people. It's trainers, nutrition, and mindset experts, and a community of other people just like you and me. And they even have my program, For Beginners Only, which you have to try even if you've never worked out a day in your life. I'll get you off the couch and started on day one, finding the joy and dropping the judgment. And don't take my word for it. You can try it for free right now for 14 days at body.com. That's body with an I.com. Let's get up, get moving, and feel good. Woo woo. Mark Pinto, Flavio's former FBI handler in Las Vegas meets with the prosecutors assigned to Flavio's case. They lay out the whole case, how Flavio recruited Christian and Massimo and attempted to sell weapons to Juan and his colleagues, who Flavio believed were agents for the FARC in Colombia. The prosecutors tell Mark about Flavio's call to the CIA and claim it was nothing more than Flavio creating a cover in case he was caught. And when they laid out everything... My opinion hadn't changed. I, the Flavio was the same. That he loves the United States would have done anything for him. He would have he would have sacrificed his life for this country, for what it stands for. So you think it's credible the story that he says he called the CIA to, not to. I mean, the government says that was a cover, right? But Flavio has maintained that he really thought he was reporting a crime and was helping the U.S. government. So you're, you're putting me in a tough position as you sit there with your arms crossed, the way for me to answer truthfully. Because um, I don't want to go contrary, because I don't know what 
the prosecuting attorneys know, not really. And I was afraid when I heard that Flavio was going to be locked away forever and the key thrown away because they're pretty serious charges. And I felt terrible because there's nothing I can do about it. To be quite honest, there's nothing I can do about it without risking my lifestyle and my wife's lifestyle. What Mark means here is that he was fired from the FBI. Remember when Flavio first met his handlers, he brought some bottles of wine as a gift? And there was a big argument until Mark agreed to accept the wine. That was against FBI policy. Mark's willingness to break the FBI's small administrative rules eventually caught up with him, costing him his job. He considers testifying in Flavio's trial to describe how Flavio worked with the Bureau in Vegas and how that might help explain his behavior with the CIA. But in the end, Mark chooses not to come forward, fearing that he would open himself up to questions about his FBI career. It's a decision that, years later, haunts Mark. I'm retired, and what I do in retirement is I take my father to church, and I go to Bible study, and I study the Bible. Gnostic exegesis of Paul, this kind of esoteric stuff that give people headaches that you drone on and on about academically that, that no one cares about. And what's common through all that is it's like people shouldn't be prosecuted unjustly. And I found myself standing outside with a lot of guilt on my shoulders because I'm not the man I'd like to be. And it's easy to do the right thing when it doesn't cost you everything. The end result of all this is that Flavio is on his own. Facing trial, Flavio doesn't get help from Mark or anyone at the FBI. The Bureau does the bare minimum. Handing over internal reports that support Flavio's claims of having been an informant, but the FBI does not offer anyone to testify about Flavio's substantial cooperation. But Flavio does get help from an unlikely group of feds, the CIA. Remarkably, and I want to emphasize how unusual this is, the CIA turns over two recordings, the calls from 2012 between Flavio and the agents. This is remarkable because the CIA rarely gets involved in U.S. criminal prosecutions. The agency is a black hole. Very little light escapes. The CIA could have reported that it didn't have recordings of the calls Flavio claims to have made. And that would have been the end of it. No one would have had the access and authority to prove the CIA wrong. So that fact, that the CIA turns over the recordings voluntarily, I've always interpreted as a kind of message. While the agency might not be taking ownership of Flavio, there's someone high up inside the CIA who's basically acknowledging, hey, there might be something to Flavio's story. Those transcripts and that call, I think, was saving my life. Flavio takes this theory further. He thinks the CIA knows he's innocent. But the agency is hamstrung. So, in Flavia's view, agents release the recordings as a way of helping him and his case. It's the best they can do. The only obligation from CIA was just the the moral obligation towards to me because they see me in the situation which I end up. You know, they say, you know what, probably he did his part. Let's whatever he said he did it, let's prove. But I can't prove this. All of this is speculation. The CIA declined to make anyone available for an interview 
and refuse to comment about Flavio's case. For their part, prosecutors don't appear to see any message from the CIA's release of the recordings. Instead, they double down on Flavio. Flavio, Christian, and Massimo are detained at the Metropolitan Correctional Center, a sand-colored high-rise federal detention facility in Lower Manhattan that looks like it popped out of the pages of a dystopian comic book. Several famous people have been placed behind bars here, including mobster John Gotti and Ponzi scheme artist Bernie Madoff. This is also the facility in which Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide while facing child sex trafficking charges. Inside the jail, Christian immediately cuts a deal to cooperate with the Justice Department. And then, amazingly, Christian and Massimo are assigned to the same cell. Massimo, at the time, is distraught. He was often crying. That's what Christian witnesses inside the cell. Massimo, curled up in the corner, sobbing. Christian suggests to Massimo that there's something he can do to get out of this situation. I told him that I signed a cooperation agreement. And Massimo confirms that. He was telling me that he was cooperating. Christian encourages Massimo to join him in cooperating with the government. Around this time, Flavio approaches Massimo in detention. As I was passing by the library, he saw me and he ran after me as I was going towards the infirmary. And he said, Massimo, I want to talk to you one minute. And I told him, tell me, what do you want? Massimo, we have to cooperate. Our lawyers have to cooperate. Flavio tells Massimo about the CIA cause. He told me that he was a cooperator with the CIA. Massimo wouldn't commit to anything. Remember, Flavio's the guy who lured him to Montenegro to be arrested. So the next month, Flavio makes an indirect appeal. An inmate by the name of Ash, who worked in the library, told me that he had a message for me on behalf of Flavio Georgescu. He was advising me to cooperate with him not to accept any deal if it were to be offered to me, and not to accept or cooperate with the government if it were to be offered to me, and not to forget that I was the father of three children, and that only my working together with him, I could go back home. In Massimo's view, Flavio's message is unambiguous. A clear intimidation. Flavio acknowledges that he asked another detainee to deliver a message to Massimo, but he denies it was any kind of threat. Flavio says he was appealing to Massimo's desire to be reunited with his family, and he believed joining forces in a defense strategy was the best approach for both of them. He says Massimo framed it as intimidation to make him look bad. And Massimo understand me because I tell him, man, I work for CIA, I helped them out. You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't let you. Massimo was most to get some money. And I didn't let him to get money from Juan. I didn't compromise him in any ways to put him in prison. I said, man, you didn't do anything wrong. Just let me do the work and we present the facts, the evidence. We're going to walk away. We're going to be okay. Don't worry. Be strong. But Massimo doesn't go along with Flavio's proposal. He takes Christian's advice and sides with federal prosecutors. Massimo signs an agreement to plead guilty and testify against Flavio in exchange for leniency at sentencing. And in the spring of 2016, the Justice Department puts Flavio on trial. That's after the break. What's up, everybody? Okay, do you guys know that even if we all ate the same and exercised the same, that we would all still look completely different? I'm Lacey Green. I'm a super trainer with body. That's B-O-D-I dot com. I'm telling you, this is something that you need in your life. The app isn't just about having a perfect body, because what is that anyway? It's about what we call health esteem. 
feeling good about yourself right now, just as you are, as you work on the person you are becoming. Using Body's tools to find your version of happy and healthy. Body isn't just some software. It's people. It's trainers, nutrition, and mindset experts, and a community of other people just like you and me. And they even have my program, For Beginners Only, which you have to try even if you've never worked out a day in your life. I'll get you off the couch and start it on day one, finding the joy and dropping the judgment. And don't take my word for it. You can try it for free right now for 14 days at body.com. That's body with an I.com. Let's get up, get moving, and feel good. Woo woo. Just about everything fits in your schedule except cleaning. Robo Rock S8 Series is here to change that. Their robots are quite intelligent and automatic, so you can schedule cleanings and develop a successful cleaning routine. Our powerful cleaning performance, like increased suction power, a mopping system, and more. The S8 Pro Ultra even has an all in one zero maintenance stocking system. Discover sweet clean relief when you get home. Go to robocock.com today. Have you heard? Temptations, America's number one cat treats brand, has expanded into mealtime with their all-new Temptations dry cat food. The food is so irresistible that a delivery truck was ambushed by a four-legged suspect. And we need your help to figure out who the mastermind is behind this perfect crime. This twisted tale of a cat burglary is unfolding in a limited podcast series called Catch a Cat Burglar. And you can become part of the investigation. Guess correctly for your chance to win a whole kitten caboodle of Temptations products and a cat-inspired getaway. Now until August 30th, submit who you think the perpetrator is at temptationstreats.com slash cat dash burglar. That's temptationstreats.com slash cat dash burglar to help identify the criminal cat responsible for this hair-raising heist for your chance to win. No purchase is necessary and entry and official rules can be found on the website. The government's case winds up being solely focused on Flavio. He's the only one on trial. Both Christian and Massimo agree to plead guilty and testify against Flavio. The words you've heard from Christian and Massimo, read by actors. I was reading for Christian. And I was reading for Massimo. Come verbatim from this trial. None of the others involved in the case, including Massimo's German contact, who arranged for the end-user certificate, or Peter Manchukov, the Bulgarian who owned the weapons factory, none of these people are charged criminally or compelled to testify. And nothing happens with the other Georgescu, Andy. Andy, 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 you're killing me, brother. Andy Georgescu was on hours of DEA recordings, and he played an integral role in connecting Juan with Flavio. The guy never called. The guy never called. Maybe he's in the plane or something, but he's supposed to fly yesterday night. Maybe he's sleeping. Why isn't Andy charged? It's a question that has long frustrated me, because... I can't get answers. Over the years, I called Andy and sent him emails and letters. I even left a note at his office near Los Angeles. He never responded. And in 2020, Andy passed away from lung cancer. Flavio's theory is that Andy was actually an informant for the FBI, something the DEA didn't know during their investigation. So when the arrests happen, According to Flavio's theory, the FBI protects Andy and prevents his prosecution. If that's true, man, three informants thinking they're working for three agencies in one enormous clusterfuck. You're certain that that Andy was working as an informant? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Flavio has no evidence to support this claim. And neither do I. But I have to admit that it's the most plausible explanation for why Andy is neither charged nor called to testify in the case. Flavio has zero doubt that Andy was a snitch and that someone powerful protected him. 
Did you ever get proof of that, or you just feel that given the circumstances, he had to have been? Uh, I was one time in his uh, uh, office, and uh, some FBI agents came over there. And, uh, you know, he was showing so much arrogance and so much power. You cannot do that if you don't have a backup. It's impossible to verify Flavio's claim there. And I've accepted that I won't find the answers about Andy Georgescu, at least not anytime soon. But there is one other Georgescu, Andra, Flavio's wife. Hello, Flavio. She will call you back after three o'clock. Andra is captured only briefly on the DEA's recordings. She answers one of Juan's calls to Flavio in September 2014. Yeah, okay. Okay. You me to, to, to tell you that. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Andra says she had no idea what Flavio was up to during the DEA sting. Flavio didn't tell her anything. And she assumed his travels with Christian and Massimo were business as usual, just Flavio being Flavio. But after Flavio's extradition, Andra moves to New York and helps him mount a defense, never doubting her husband's story that he was working with the CIA. In May 2016, just before Flavio's trial is scheduled to begin, Andra sends me an email. The main reason for this email, Andra writes, is that I want to reveal the outrageous conduct of the U.S. government and how a U.S. citizen is treated after he helped this country so many times. Andra also reaches out to my colleague, Murtaza Hussein. He and I write about Flavio's case for The Intercept in 2016, and Murtaza attends Flavio's trial in Manhattan. There was a deep sense of ambiguity around this entire case from beginning to end. This is Murtaza Hussein. So there was clearly uh, a kernel of doubt on both sides. And it just seemed to come down in the end to which doubt you saw as stronger. At trial, Christian and Massimo both testify against Flavio as part of their deals for leniency. And they both claim that Flavio was the mastermind of the weapons deal and suggest that Flavio's calls with the CIA were nothing more than an insurance policy, a cover if he was ever caught. Flavio, attempting to counter that narrative, takes the stand in his own defense. His lawyer asks him, do you regret what you did? No, never, and I will do it again, Flavio answers. What he means is that he doesn't regret trying to help the U.S. government. If I walk, I will do it again, Flavio says. He was very insistent and emotional, actually, on the stand that, yeah, he said the entire time I was doing this for the benefit of the United States. I love America. I want to do something to help America. So on the stand, he very much appealed to his own patriotism and love for the United States. And uh, I thought appealed to the court and to the jury as well, too, on that score. And he seemed quite sincere, but there was no real way of substantiating it in great detail because the only evidence that there really existed that this was what he was thinking was the one call he made to the CIA to try to report what was happening when he was being entrapped. So they played that tape in court. Because these guns, they don't go in the United States, they go to Colombia, but the thing it is, no, uh, you I, know, you want me to investigate that? I understand what you're, yeah, what you're passing to us, and I, I do appreciate why you're, you're telling us. It's definitely something that if we can verify would be of interest to the to the agency to be aware of. And that was the crux of his defense. I think it was enough to raise doubt about it. So it was some doubt. During cross-examination, the prosecutor, Elon Graf, suggests that some of Flavio's behavior during the weapons deal, such as using encrypted messaging apps, indicated that he was trying to hide what he was doing from the CIA. Flavio raises his voice in protest. Bring the reports, Flavio barks back, referring to the transcripts of his calls with the CIA. You have the very report, Mr. Graf. Why don't you bring the report in front of the jury and show them? Flavio reminds the jury that he had told the CIA about the entire crime 
before it happened. And he got quite upset. He got quite emotional. I remember he yelled a bit and he was, you know, fighting for his life. On May 25th, 2016, the jury comes back with a verdict. Guilty. During Flavio's trial, I asked the DEA for a comment. A spokesman declined to comment specifically on Flavio's case, but defended the agency's narco-terrorism stings in general. Quote, We go after folks that are drug traffickers, arms traffickers, whatever the case may be. They are predisposed to criminal acts. All we do is allow the means to give them the opportunity to commit these crimes they would otherwise commit without us. These defendants have every opportunity to walk away. On December 2nd, 2016, Flavio returns to court for his sentencing hearing. U.S. District Judge Ronnie Abrams offers Flavio an opportunity to make a statement before he's sentenced. Flavio faces a maximum penalty of life in prison. My actions were to help the United States government and the citizens of the United States, Flavio tells the judge. I have always maintained my innocence. Judge Abrams sentences Flavio to 10 years in prison, a fraction of the life sentence she could have given him, and what seems like an acknowledgement of ambiguities, if not some doubts, in the government's case. So Flavio is sent to a prison in Maryland. This call is from Flavio Georgescu. An inmate at a federal prison. And that's when Flavio and I start talking. This goes on sporadically for a few years. Calls like this one. Until Flavio is released in the summer of 2022 to a halfway house in New York. Where Flavio and I finally meet in person. You know what I pray every night? To somebody to come to me, shake my hand, and said it was a misunderstanding. It's not your fault. It's not our fault. That's in the next episode. This is Up in Arms, season two of Alphabet Boys. Alphabet Boys is a production of Western Sound and iHeart Podcasts. The show is reported, written, and hosted by me, Trevor Aronson. For more information about this series, or to drop us a tip, head to our website, alphabetboys.xyz. You can contact me on Twitter or Instagram, at Trevor Aronson. The show's Instagram is alphabetboys.pod. If you're enjoying Alphabet Boys, tell your friends about the show. Personal recommendations are the best recommendations. And if you want to see an illegal arms deal from the inside, again, it's alphabetboys.xyz. You'll find undercover recordings and documents related to Flavio's case. Finally, you can help us ride the algorithms by leaving a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. That helps other people find us. And thanks for listening. Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for people who want to know more. And now check out Curiosity's new series, Queens of Ancient Egypt. When pharaohs held the throne, their wives held the power. We see her taking precedence over the pharaoh, an absolute mastermind. All hail the queens. This is unprecedented. Watch Queens of Ancient Egypt now on Curiosity Stream. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. Just about everything fits in your schedule except cleaning. Robo Rock S8 Series is here to change that. Their robots are quite intelligent and automatic, so you can schedule cleanings and develop a successful cleaning routine. Our powerful cleaning performance, like increased suction power, a mopping system, and more. The S8 Pro Ultra even has an all-in-one zero-maintenance stocking system. Discover sweet, clean relief when you get home. Go to R-O-B-O-R-O-C-K dot com today. 
Summer is here and our sleep is just as important as our weekend plans. So get the sleep you deserve with Lisa. For a limited time, save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows during our summer sale. Check out our hybrid mattress designed to keep you cool during those hot summer nights. Lisa also offers free shipping and a risk-free 100-night trial. Get the sleep you deserve. Shop our summer sale now and save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows at lisa.com. That's L-E-E-S-A.com. Exclusions apply. Visit lisa.com for details.